Dear members and guests, welcome to our webinar, At Home With. Tonight, we have invited two main curators, Jean-François Charnier and Olivia Boura. They will be discussing about his book, Louvre Abu Dhabi, A World Vision of Art. I would like to stress that tonight's event is about the book. There is probably no need to introduce to you Jean-François. As you all know, Jean-François is a world-recognized heritage and art curator. In 2008, he joined Agence France Museum to coordinate the expertise of French national museums, including, including the Louvre, Centre Pompidou, Musée d'Orsay, and others for the creation of the Louvre Abu Dhabi. Since August 2018, he joined Agence France Aloula as head of Aloula Culture. Olivia Boura is an art historian. She joined Agence France Museum in 2014 and was appointed curatorial director from 2018 to 2020 for the Louvre Abu Dhabi project. She is now national curator of the French Ministry of Culture. So to better introduce Jean-François and Olivia, we have with us today as moderator, Vincent Larnicol, an art director and contributor to the art circle. Jean-François, Olivia, thank you very much for being with us today. Vincent, the floor is yours. Good evening, uh, and thank you very much, everybody, for joining us uh, tonight. Jean-François, Olivia, I particularly welcome you uh, because I'm very fond of curators myself. I respect the, word of the work of curators very, very much. It's a very behind the scene kind of job. Um, we have received a lot of artists in the, the, the life, the short life, I would say, of the art circle, but very active life. But um, the work of curators are to us uh, very important. Um, I believe that you have uh, common grounds, both of you. You are both graduated from the famous Ecole du Louvre in Paris. Uh, you are both uh, extremely fond of archaeology, uh, of course, uh, but also the, the, let's say, the joining and the uh, the exchange of cultures uh, throughout your history. Barbara has uh, briefly presented you through uh, the CV, but I guess uh, there are a couple of things that perhaps are uh, interesting. Olivia, you are a member of the uh, selection committee of the Beirut uh, Art Fair, which for the viewers is of course very important, being a regional contemporary art fair. And, and of course, Jean-Francois, uh, you're very active uh, very recently um, in this major project of, uh, of the Alula Museum experience. So I guess um, your experience of the region is very important, is very strong. Tonight we will be talking about uh, the book that you have uh, uh, managed to read, to, to write uh, together with, with other, other contributors, obviously. But this book to me is, is rather fascinating. I actually have it with me here. It's a, it's a book that um, I had the pleasure to read, not being able to go to Le Louvre Abu Dhabi so much in the past 12 months. To me, uh, those books are, are, I would say, if you're not able to uh, go to museums, are almost the next big, best thing, as I, as I kind of posted uh, recently. Now, I think there is one element of what curators do and try to do and more and more, is to show that art in a way, and museums perhaps, and that's maybe a debate that we can have tonight, could be universal. And it is true that for those and most of the members and most of the viewers who are present today had the chance to visit Louvre Abu Dhabi, uh, it could be one of the very, very first universal museum. Um, the floor will be yours in a, in a few seconds, but I think it's important that we uh, try to discover uh, with your presentation today, what is it uh, to be a curator? What is it to be a storyteller? because I believe that you are probably the modern uh, novel writers, storytellers. And I think we want to enjoy it as, as much as we have enjoyed reading your book and obviously visiting uh, the places that you have uh, curated in your, in your career. So thank you again for being here tonight. And uh, maybe I will intervene uh, during the, the presentation, but the, at the end of your presentation in about 15 minutes, I will be back for sure with questions, so the audience is more than welcome to raise questions. Uh, I will do a selection of them and, uh, and raise uh, those questions to our, to our two contributors today. Welcome again, Olivia and Jean-Francois, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, uh, first of all, to, 
to welcome us like this. I am so happy to be part of this conversation. Jean-Francois, uh, if you want to start, maybe. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, I want to thank uh, very much uh, Barbara uh, for this invitation. Uh, to the art circle. I'm very pleased to, uh, to talk also in Abu Dhabi. Uh, I've lived there with, uh, for, for the Louvre Abu Dhabi uh, with my family for many years. Olivia also came mm -hmm. with part of the team. Part of the team is still working now in the Louvre Abu Dhabi. So we have uh, made this, uh, this great uh, endeavor for, uh, for the country. And, um, and thank you, uh, Vincent, for these kind words. Of introduction, I, I, I focusing uh, uh, yes uh, directly this main concept uh, that uh, is not, I think, uh, is certainly not perhaps uh, well understood. Uh, seems sometimes to be old, but uh, always I think uh, uh, have to be uh, rethought in this time of globalization. This concept of uh, universalism, and uh, if we did this with Abu Dhabi, is to try to find an answer. And uh, yes, we believe that it's possible to think about uh, universalism today. And we hope that the Ruha Abu Dhabi um, was not perhaps the, 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 the total answer of, for that, but uh, opened uh, a lot of questions and made it showing that it was possible to, to think about that as a, as a starting point for the debate. Uh, it's not uh, just uh, the starting point from scratch, because as we will see, there were certainly also other reflections before, but it's certainly a, a great rendezvous for this uh, thinking is not, that will be certainly not finished now. We will focus our discussion about the book because this book uh, at the end is the conclusion. Is uh, We will see is the profitable book of the museum. It arrived uh, two years after the opening because uh, during the, this uh, great work of the Louvre Abu Dhabi, we were all working, we were waiting for the text, we were still working on the concept, but uh, it arrives at the end uh, you know, like uh, the reference book, uh, there will be, uh, we see the, the guide that it's certainly already a, a very important book for the comprehension of the institution, but the coffee table books with all the article uh, is, uh, is a sum that uh, I reopen it oftenly and all the time I find new ideas and new orientation for the future. Yes, I was going uh, to say yes. that. Thank you for this opportunity to, to go back to this book. Uh, it had been a few months since uh, I, I didn't read any of these texts because I was into uh, other things, but uh, it was a pleasure to go back to it and, uh, and see how rich it is. And I guess that uh, it was published two years after the opening because for everyone, and we see all the people who contributed, we needed all this time to really understood what uh, the museography of the Louvre Abu Dhabi really brought, uh, what kind of answers sometimes to some challenges on the conceptual level, but also uh, on other aspects. So this is what we're going to discuss now. And I'm very pleased to, uh, to, uh, to have this uh, dialogue with Olivia, uh, that was uh, the deputy director at the time of the building and the construction, the, the writing of this museum, of this uh, story told of the Louvre Abu Dhabi. And uh, she understood uh, really, and we work very uh, all together on this uh, conceptualization of universalism, of uh, decentrement of the gaze, of uh, uh, reorientation of the, the thinking, uh, of the, um, also the dialogue of art, as uh, anyone now can see in the museum. So uh, we had a lot of uh, very strong uh, debate and discussion internally, and I hope that uh, this discussion today will uh, pay homage of all this time of, uh, of reflection. I think we can, we can start. Um, so, I will try to go ahead. Yes, um, <laughs> the main question is this universalism. I put immediately this image of uh, Napoleon uh, because uh, for, uh, for French and also for uh, uh, other countries, this universalism is so French. It seems to be so linked to the 18th, 19th century vision of the world. And uh, it also the vision that uh, has built uh, the collection in Europe. At the beginning of the Louvre Abu Dhabi, uh, we knew that we had to uh, reload this uh, collection to rethink about uh, the recollection of the collection because at the end we didn't know we knew what was an encyclopedic museum but not an universal museum and um, if i if i we enter in uh, in the in the presentation of, of some of the key uh, issues 
uh, of the, con uh, the, the elaboration of the concept is also to explain why we build a book as it is now at uh, hope people will, will, will can see and read, uh, have already certainly read. Um, the, the collection in France are spread. The Louvre is not an universal museum because, uh, you know, a lot of part of the collection are distributed of, you know, Asia, the Musée Guimet, Africa, Oceania is a Musée uh, du Quai 19th century in Orsay, Pompidou. So at the end, stays at the Louvre, part, just part of the collection, of the historical collection that don't count the history of the world. Uh, and the Louvre Abu Dhabi had the great chance to uh, uh, rethink all the collection together. And so at that time, it was quite exciting to think that we were able to think about a, 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 a common narrative for all that. And uh, we knew and we visited and we explored many other institutions that tried to do something. And, uh, but uh, it was just, you know, sometimes a little deceptive. I don't say about the Louvre Lens, that is the first, you know, a proposition of decompartmentalization. That means that, you know, you have no more walls of gates between the departments, between the Greeks and the Egyptian, between the French painting and the English painting, for example. But there were just, uh, you know, no dialogue in a way. Also for the Ashmolean that uh, tried also to refurbish with a new presentation and some exhibition that were perhaps more experiential, but not going directly in a, in a, in a common global history. Yes, and yes. also, certainly that is linked to something that uh, connects direct, directly to the, the, the thinking and the books. Um, there were no really no books uh, on the uh, global vision of art uh, as a, a connected vision of art. Uh, yes, you have uh, like uh, the world history of art of uh, Honor and Fleming that is said to be the, the, the more, the, 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 all the art history in one, one book for uh, the English and American students. But uh, if in introduction, the author says that important to connect, to compare and dialogue of art, nothing is done in the, in the, in the book itself. The same for the, the book of Borman. When you see the, the, the cover, you can imagine that there is certainly a reflection about um, what is the spirit of art history but nothing is said in the book itself. And also for the book, the MacGregor, the British Museum, as you know, the British Museum tried to do several uh, reflections about uh, the world history, uh, an history in uh, 100 objects, but it's 100 monographies. And uh, we didn't want it to, to fall in that pitfall of, uh, uh, of uh, thinking that there were no possibilities to rethink the real meaning of history, the real construction of history, that is not only compartmentalization, is not only separation, is not only identity separated, but the world shows that there are a lot of uh, uh, ways, uh, connections, that uh, is also an, an important part of the motor of history. And uh, yes, just a, a look at the collection, you see, and uh, we can uh, just here um, I have some of, uh, of uh, element of connection that we made with the collection. It was uh, during the, the construction of the museum and before. Yes, there are patterns along the, the Silk Road that were shared between China, Japan, and, uh, and the Western world. There were connections in Israel time, but also in antiquity. There are, and uh, Olivia knows perfectly that. If you want, Olivia, perhaps. Yes, just uh, one word about this uh, theme of uh, universal. What strikes me when uh, reading again all these different articles in the book, it's that uh, behind this idea of universal, what appears is that this museum really gives a glimpse of the amazing diversity of human creation. And this is something that uh, now, as I haven't been reading this for a while, to read it again, it's really something that all these art historians, all these important curators are uh, really underlining because uh, by putting, by getting rid of this very academic way of presenting artworks, suddenly uh, the diversity of creation is really striking. And so we present art from prehistory to contemporary art and all around the world. And it's very interesting to see, thanks to that, that we're not talking about differences because in fact, it's humans facing the same kind of challenges. But what is very interesting is to see that to these same issues, they are bringing uh, such an amazing diversity of answers. And so probably this museum is about that. It's telling us about the fact that we have 
we're all humans facing the same question. Where are we from? Where do we go after life? Uh, what is the meaning of all this, etc. But the amazing thing is to see how each region, each culture has been able to innovate in the way they answer to this question. And, and here is, uh, I, I think, uh, a beautiful example of human creativity. So in this sense, here we see, for instance, a, a slide uh, that corresponds to um, a presentation we did uh, in, in the galleries showing that, uh, as, as most of you maybe know and I could see in, uh, in the galleries, uh, the blue and white Chinese porcelain, of course, fascinated the whole world. But what we wanted to show through uh, different examples of regions of the world who uh, were inspired by this blue and white uh, porcelain, it's to show that an artist is never just taking something and trying to imitate, but very soon he will adapt, he will assimilate, and he will innovate out, out of it. And somehow this kind of universal museum is this kind of invitation to say, okay, go back to the past, see the diversity of production, but then do something completely new out of it. So uh, this is uh, also something that I really like through this example uh, because it's never only copy. Absolutely. And you know, when you uh, study one of these uh, examples from its region, everybody there thinks that it's totally unique. Uh, uh, and we have to say that, yes, it's unique. Yes, there is a legitimacy of this creation, but it's also important to say that uh, it is it's, uh, uh, among uh, a network of, uh, of dialogues, of exchange, that is very complex. And it's also the building, the writing of the reality of history. So uh, there's this, uh, uh, there is this, this identity is something that is uh, it's certainly the, 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 the great word, is certainly the element of the construction of the culture, Art is certainly the pure product of the identity because you create art to uh, try to give an image of yourself for yourself, for the others. So you create difference. And it's interesting to show that with the pure product of the difference, you can explain also that there are dialogues and there are exchange. And sometimes the artists themselves don't know that. And uh, it's interesting, it's a role of the curator, of the archaeologist, of the art historians, of the anthropologist, to remake that, that is also a paying homage of the reality of history. And we believe, and we believe at that time, that it was important to talk about that also in this time of globalization, where, as we can see, uh, we love building walls, we love creating and uh, reinforcing local identities. Yes, it's important. Yes, we need to also uh, give uh, the possibility of each people, each community to be proud of it, of herself, of themselves. But it's important also to, 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 to try to explain and to show that this uh, identity has to be built in reflexivity, in dialogue with the other. It's very important because it's the only way uh, to, uh, to, to certainly build a, a common future on this earth. And archaeology, art history, retrace this history for the world. And the museum are the place where this reflection can be done. Mm -hmm. So, uh, for example, yes, we have a, a common moment of, uh, of a great uh, figure of power. Yes, we have uh, also in the modern times. Uh, yes, we have also common synthesis of uh, human shapes in some period of history that are the beginning of its civilization. It has to be, when you have a, a local a monographic view of the world, you cannot understand that. But if you start to see that largely, you feel that something is happening quite sometimes in the same time. That was not before, that was not after, but it's shared by the world. So you have like great layer of history that sometimes are shared and they are not always in the same times. You know, there are fluctuation of times, but it's important to tell this common, uh, I would say, tray of global history. That is at the source of the museum, at the source of this uh, uh, world vision of art as a book. Diversions, convergence, you know that the importance of the light for the universal religion. Light is uh, the presence of the divine, but it's seen differently. And also image like this that now we know since 50 years that we are making much more research in archaeology, that we are benefiting of many more data than before, and some synthesis that, and some idea that perhaps were intuitive in the early 20th century start to be all change of evolving 
are updated by this uh, uh, analysis. For example, the discovery of the importance of the Os Osman Osiri in the Central Asia between the Black Sea and the Altai, where uh, man start to uh, uh, rise and uh, start to expand all around. And you have this expression of Os and Osiri and chariots around the world. Each civilization thinks that they are unique for that. But if you put that on the map, you, you, you feel that there is a great common moment of uh, civilization and uh, each of them are different, totally different, but they are linked in a way. What I think is very interesting in, the, in this book too, and it's like uh, also what we did as a work for the galleries, is that this book is very uh, multidisciplinary. So there is at the same time some uh, texts that are more about archaeology, Others more about uh, anthropology, others more like archaeology, uh, uh, and uh, and very different approaches. And this is what it makes very rich because we see that we're all struggling, uh, creating these dialogues and connections. But probably one of the answers is to accept the fact that maybe it's different approaches altogether that can help us going through uh, these challenges and finding the right uh, solution sometimes. So this is why I think these dialogues also in the book. Uh, remind me very much of the discussions we used to have in, in very different uh, fields in order to find the, the right solutions for the museography. Absolutely, and you, when you think about the slide like this, you have data from archaeology, you have art production, uh, you have anthropology to understand the relation between man and others, and because the, the horse and osiris is also the symbol of power, and you have at the end a philosophical question about the, the, the meaning of time, the meaning of uh, nomadism and relation to sedentarity and the shape of societies. So you need to cross that as you need to cross specialities to get uh, a landscape, a narrative landscape of what is happening on the world. And uh, that uh, also is an image we, we, we think sometimes that uh, why uh, the universality in mankind, it starts by the beginning that you are one humanity, one human from Australia to uh, North America, from Europe, from Africa, and uh, there is uh, like uh, the diffusion of a human from Africa. That means that you have the same brain, the same structure of the brain, the same way to think metaphorically the world uh, with this brain, with the same perhaps thought at the beginning, perhaps coming from the same family. So this all this divergence could appear also not like difference, like divergence. That means that uh, we are the construction of an history, perhaps from the focal point. And all the spread of human on the earth is question of adaptation, adaptability, local historical scenarios that create this diversity of history. Mm -hmm. This is a possibility. Yes, and I guess that when we were asking, uh, is it possible today to make some uh, universal museums to censor? I like very much the text from uh, Martin Kemp, who says, well, finally, the, the great, great question that uh, we try to answer in this geography is why humans make art. And it's by creating again these dialogues and uh, putting together artworks that we never see together that we are really raising this question, not bringing answers because they're too complex, but letting everyone ask in himself this kind of question. Absolutely. Why, why, why can humans are making art? Why, 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 what is art? And uh, yes, what is interesting, where Sapiens came, he put his hand on the wall. I, we don't know what is the meaning of that. Is, is, is it an aesthetical expression? Is it a, a symbol of a appropriation? Is it a symbol of a sign of identity, community? Uh, you know, is, we are so far from now that it's difficult uh, over humanities, but there is already a creation, an art creation in a way. And that, at the end, uh, create that, an image that uh, well, uh, well known when we built it, this image, uh, it's just to say, look at the fact that uh, human everywhere wanted to have a gold mask to, uh, to bury their, their dead. That, why? Why is it linked to the gold? Is this the same uh, symbolism of gold, in, you know, uh, incorruptibility, eternity? Uh, why come from, uh, you know, Borneo, China, Egypt, South America, North America, Europe? Mediterranean Sea, what is common? Is it linked to what we are saying about the same human? Is it the same brain? Is it the same feeling, the same reaction? Each mask is different. So we are, you know, this grand debate that uh, Olivia is saying that, be careful not to say that everything is the same. 
No, the Louvre is not saying that everything is the same. We try also to say that there are roots, that there are links, connections, there are possible dialogues. But what is interesting is human is a great creator of difference. And uh, this diversity is different is also a key element of this uh, world landscape of humanity. And we have to uh, care it because it's a, it's a, it's a medium of uh, respect. And uh, you know, when you say that uh, sometimes that there is something common, uh, you have some people say, no, 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 I'm totally different. I don't want to uh, hear that uh, I have something in common with this person of, or you, you are th thinking that I'm not legitimate because I would be one time in my history uh, influenced by, by them? No, it's not this history. We, we, we have to say the museum is there as a, as a, as a tool of legitimacy, a, a, a pantheon for culture. Uh, it's a place where it's like a temple where you pay homage by the creation to, the, to humankind, to humanity of humankind. Mm -hmm. And this, you were talking about what is the role of a curator, and I guess that the work that has been done in trying to recreate this dialogue between artworks that are never in the same museums, as uh, Jean-François said at the beginning, this is really the heart, the heart also of a curator's work. And we see in the text also that this is something that probably uh, uh, scholars are struggling with. It's very different than putting together some artworks that will tell us another story. We're, we're not in the concept, we're just, facing some objects like here in this slide, and definitely they are telling something about what they have in common. Yeah. We don't know exactly how and why, but- Yeah, we ask like questions. The thing is telling us there is something there. Absolutely, the collection of the museum allows, allows us to ask that question. We have not the answer, but it's a constatation. And when we put that on the map, we feel that something, something happened, something existed. And, uh, and uh, it's just it's how we can say that it's the beginning of the inquiry. It's the beginning of the story. And we can now start to think, start to elaborate, start to discuss with Egyptologists, with different pre-Columbian archaeologists. The, the future would be to put around the table specialists to work, to see what this is the for difference in what exact context it was used, what we can say, how to go further in the debate. Uh, 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 a museum like Rue Abu Dhabi is like, you know, the beginning of an efflorescence of a diversity of thinkings, of a reflection. The global uh, ask uh, new questions and uh, can re-ask questions to people working on their place without thinking by the high view about some of the facts, some of the, the, the analysis and changing their, their questionnaire for, uh, for their own anal analysis. And I think that there, as curators, we're lucky because we're dealing with our, our first material is all these artworks. And it's much, much richer sometimes than concept because uh, you're in front of them, but you can interpret them and approach them in so many different ways. So they're telling us so many histories. And when we put them together in a certain way, uh, they are telling them even more. So uh, this is a gallery so rich. It's a, it's a lot. We, we say often that uh, the museum uh, open the possibility to ask questions that uh, also the archaeologists and anthropologists never ask. Because sometimes the museum is also a question about uh, uh, what, what you are using for. Because the archaeologists said the museum is just aesthetics, uh, you know, the anthropologists said the point of view is not the right one. But the museum is gathering witness, witnesses from uh, different parts of the world, from different periods, that without the museum, they would have disappeared. So it's the place where this archive of the world can, should be a can be analysis. So on this uh, conceptual uh, intuition, I would say, ideas, uh, thinkings, teams have worked, team have worked long, and we have thought about uh, rethinking the bibliography, how to reconnect things, how to find a solution that uh, uh, you can experience, have any comprehension of history that you can know about the Louvre, for example, in Paris. When if you want to understand antiquity, you have to go to different departments, take a lift, go from, uh, you know, a, a corridor, from another wing. Uh, if you want to understand the link between Spanish painting, Italian painting, French painting, you know, uh, Portuguese painting, you have to cross different departments. So nobody understands the history. 
And nobody understand what this museum was made for at the beginning, convention of the history of the world, to have the world vision of art. So we started by that and we made different SCPs. You know, the SCPs is the museum statement. That is the, the concept. What we are saying now, we put that in written writing and uh, I openly, uh, recently reopened this, um, this book and already we, we uh, remember we put that uh, connection of, uh, of image, this, uh, uh, you know, confrontation uh, that was just uh, amazing about uh, all uh, what, what we could have said about that. And uh, it was quite an excitement because it was already uh, the way we, 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 we would have had to, to build a bibliography and to think about this narrative. And also uh, fixing the train of, you know, what we have in color is the different galleries of uh, the permanent galleries. Uh, you know this from these different galleries in, inside the Louvre Abu Dhabi. And we started to imagine the, the tour with the naming of the gallery, the 12 galleries. And we have discussion a lot with Jean Nouvel and his team because we changed the shape of this gallery. We wanted a, a continued train and not just separate pavillons. We wanted to count an history. So what the exciting, exciting moment, and I think the success of the Louvre Abu Dhabi was the great dialogue between the, the content team, the curatorial team, and Jean Nouvel and his team to make uh, this, this respiration between, you know, the context, the building, and the content. And when you visit the Louvre Abu Dhabi, I think one feel that, uh, and particularly in the beginning of the Grand Vestibule. And really the idea was to uh, take the, the visitor by the hand uh, into a story. The storytelling was really the key to say, it's not about being very academic in the presentation uh, because uh, in academic presentations, like, I don't know, if you go to a Greek gallery, you will see all these stones next to each other and not necessarily understand why this is amazing and why you should stop longer in front of these other white marble uh, and uh, so uh, when you have too, too many of these uh, similar uh, um, artworks, maybe you don't see them anymore. And here the idea was really to create a story, a narrative that is quite simple and takes you through time to see these artworks really highlighted because they are so different one to each other. And at the same time, they're definitely telling you something about what they have in common sometimes in the way they were selected, of course, in the galleries. So this is, I think, quite um, new. We were very focusing on the fact to be accessible to all, uh, because this is also a way to invite curiosity. If you only have the feeling to see in front, to be in front of stones, you, you won't have this emotion that we were trying to, uh, to really create uh, in the galleries. And this is why when you go through the galleries, you have this uh, very personal and I think emotional journey through the artwork, because Maybe there are some of the art artworks that you know already because they are from your culture or you've seen them already in museums, but maybe there are other artworks that you know nothing about, but somehow they will produce a huge uh, emotion or a huge effect on you. So this is a very uh, intense journey because we try to make it really accessible and understandable and meaningful for everyone. And uh, we immediately feel, because we made some presentation, that uh, the brain of some, some museum were changing at that moment. Two, three years after that, our first presentation, look at the, the brand of the Metropolitan in New York. So uh, immediately, we, we knew at that time that we were getting something great and something that uh, would, should have been the future of the great museum in the world. I mean, the Metropolitan, the British Museum, the Museum in Los Angeles, the other museum in America and Europe, the Louvre. And uh, it was a wish, but we understood that other museums were starting to understand and to try to, to follow. And look at that. After the opening, one or two years after that, you have the rethinking of the museography of the Musée de Montréal in Canada. That was exactly Nathalie Bondil came visited and said to me, I will change the museography thing from, from that. Uh, also the, the, the moment in New York, reconnect and uh, directly be inspired, writing, writing by the curator, inspired by the Louvre Abu Dhabi. Uh, you know, the museum also in, the, in the Texas are also uh, even inspired now in the rethinking. And we hope that uh, there will be uh, what we have called the Louvre Abu Dhabi effect 
You know, there was a Guggenheim effect for the architecture and the importance for a territory. The Louvre Abu Dhabi effect is a reflection about, to rethink about the meaning of art and the connection between, on, on art. And uh, we are sure that the, this book will certainly be used in the future as the starting point of something. We now will get more on the, on the book. The epic of the edition that, uh, yes, we knew that uh, we wanted uh, uh, to make many books. Quite all of them have been produced now. Also, the exhibition catalogs that we started to work uh, on that, like, uh, like uh, a collection. Uh, you know, um, I, I want to pay homage also to uh, uh, Simone Verde that was in the team in charge of the edition and was also very impacting on some of the key concepts of this edition with us. Um, just to say that there were some intellectual adventure like uh, the Abi Warburg Memosim Atlas, you know, this uh, thinker that tried to reconnect uh, the meanings of some of the arts. Instead, certainly uh, inter quite mainly intellectual and uh, very European centred, but it shows the possibilities of uh, correspondence, uh, affinities between arts of the world. But also, uh, <laughs> you know, the Musée Imaginaire of André Malraux. I like this picture. Uh, we did that as also as a team, jumping in the in the collection and. Uh, Dreaming the about the on the floor. Of speech. Yes, <laughs> in yes. the offices. Yeah. <laughs> I, I yes. hope that everybody can do that on the subject he can love. You know, putting and trying to, to create correspondence. Uh, you know, uh, affinity elective affinities, uh, affinity elective on works of art. And you know, the, the, the collection he built, uh, L'Univers des Formes, uh, is still always read by art students now. Mm. That is world vision of art, but it tends to be quite always uh, separated. Uh, the, 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 gear, the guide that arrived at the moment of the opening is also, uh, I made this introduction, that is this, the concept we are talking at, are, are written here in the introduction of the guide. And uh, yes, the Great Vestibule, that is uh, the statement, uh, as everybody knows, of this concept of the Rura Abu Dhabi. Since the beginning, we ask the question, we don't give the answer about why this why of the similarities but uh, uh horns yes. Fredekamp talks in in one of the articles of the book of the importance also of as curators feel free to be subjective sometimes and to use our intuition to put together some objects that because they are together will tell us so much more than when they are alone or just with a uh, similar art for some typologies so uh, this is also what we wanted to show here as a, as already mentioned Yes, I remember when we thought about this Grand Vestibule, everybody was saying, why you do that? Nobody will understand. Why you do that? Nobody will understand from everywhere. But at the end, I think everybody understand that something is happening. And uh, it, we, we decided to write little texts that were more poetical and subjective, just to allow to re-ask questions about these meanings but not to give answers. As we were saying, we have not the answer, or we have some of the answer. But the polysemy of the work, the polysemy of the connections is as large of the polyphony of who read and look at that. Everybody that will come from each culture, from each age or background, will have a view. And this view is interesting because this point of view enrich also the, 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 the view and the analysis we can have on that. Mm -hmm. And in this time of, uh, of as for uh, legitimacy and uh, culture, genders, uh, you know, colors, uh, we need to understand and to, to understand this diversity of narratives uh, because it's a, a particular point of view and uh, all the challenge is to keep the possibilities of start to continue to have narratives, narration, in keeping this diversity of the point of views. This is a great concept of uh, our future for culture. Yes, and I like the text of Alexander Nigel that we, you will find also in the, uh, in the book that says that uh, one of the risks today in this very globalized world is that there is kind of an, uh, whether an activism, whether kind of an uh, homogeneity absorption, so nothing looks more like an art, a contemporary art gallery than another contemporary art gallery or a biennale from another biennale. 
And so it's good sometimes to have museums that are like a step back to remind us of the diversity of the, the art creation and maybe to just foster also this uh, human creativity in many different ways. So this is also why somehow it's universal because it reminds us of that. that we, we have many, many different options creatively and we can decide like the memories, what we, we take, what we, we keep uh, in order to make it ours and uh, to nourish uh, our, ourselves and our creation. So it's this kind of a museum that invites you to. Yeah. So let's let's now enter with this um, platform of concept, platform orientation. Um, why did we did this book as this? You know. So, you know, first, sometimes people are lost because they don't understand. They think that there is a mistake in the conception of the book. They open the book and at the, at the middle. It's the reverse. So we say, oh, there is, a, uh, is, there, is there a problem with the editing of this book. It's not right. It's head to tell, head to tell. And so, uh, as this, it's also an uh, element of the concept of the book itself. The idea is that uh, uh, we, we decided uh, from the concept that uh, uh, we are in the encounter between the East, the East and the West. Uh, we have two different philosophy of culture and philosophy of also sometimes of history. Um, and uh, from the idea that uh, universality is something that is also part of meeting of uh, different uh, uh, orientation thinking. And in the, uh, uh, we found that in the German philosophy uh, that uh, uh, the sublime is born at the encounter between the time and and the geography and the space. At the encounter of the time and the space, you have this specific moment of like, like a peace that is the sublime. And here, the universality has the encounter between geography and history. And we are always at the crossing point of geography and history. So it's also a metaphor uh, of, uh, of these encounters. And so the, 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 you see the, 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 the astrolabe is in the middle and seems to turn and cross history, cross geography, make also Napoleon, uh, uh, you know, uh, attach and, uh, and articulate to history, like if it was a moment of the wheel of time and also reconnecting with uh, Asia. Uh, at the middle, you have just also a double page on the Astrolab and uh, from the two sides, you have this, uh, uh, you know, this is the, the, the articulation we, we try to, uh, uh, to build from time to space to universality and try to find the subject that would have always more um, get universal uh, impact and spirit. It could be, uh, you know, so the idea that the chronology uh, bringing to us to always more uh, universality, the geography also, in a, in a sense, uh, and, and getting to this universality. Um, that, that is also linked to this, uh, um, in the, the, the right page of this uh, concept of uh, uh, the fact that the circle in uh, each culture is the symbol of the purity, the symbol of the uh, achievement. And uh, uh, we know that also uh, here you have so uh, chapters are built to, to reach this achievement of universality. And uh, I, I like this idea that, uh, you know, from Platon, the solids of Platon that shows that always more you put face in, uh, in, uh, in a geometry, you get to the circle. And this circle at the end is like the sun or the moon, is like the purity. And at the end, people didn't knew that they were on the wrong uh, earth. So it has an intuition that the, 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 the humanity was itself on, on a specific geometrical shape. Uh, and uh, in being always in a relation to the geometrical shape that build a nature that is very exceptional, that is also at the, at the core of different civilization here. You see, you put the human body that is certainly the achievement in the circle in, uh, in, uh, in uh, Leonardo, but also in the Islamic world. This uh, structure that is the geometry uh, that is part of the world that could have a center, could also be sometimes anthropomorphic, but it's also inscribed in, in this idea of, the, of, the, of this achievement of the circle. Um, so from the two sides, 
you have the center in trance. Uh, it reminds the, 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 the geography or the history and uh, here the great vestibule floor. Time history memory uh, and the other side, space, geography, territory. Mm -hmm. And we get, we try to, to find author, to discuss with the author on the way that they can enter in this discussion from this entrance on the other. Uh, yes, uh, everything is not totally just history from one side and geography the other. As I'm seeing, when you make history, we talk. You talk always about geography, and mm -hmm. when you talk about geography, you talk always about history. Uh, you know. So, uh, but it's interesting to 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 feel that you start from one point in your point. There is a there is a meaning, uh, a, a deep meaning, and you arrive to this universality. And it's interesting to see that. We selected some of the major art historians, historians, archaeologists uh, of today who have been working somehow or another on world history or connected history, or there is a lot of movements, global history. Um, and, and we see that each of them has his own specific approach in the long time. But here in this book, uh, they all complete each other, really. And it's very interesting that they all arrive somehow to a quite similar um, concept. And at, at the center of the book, as Jean-François said, uh, it suddenly makes a lot of uh, uh, coherence. And all of them are trying to find somehow, and since many years, it's also that that we wanted to show, that we've been nourished for our own work as curator. We've been nourished by years and years of uh, researchers and academics who have been thinking about how to rewrite art history and history as it has been done by Western world mainly. And, uh, and we see how it's all together that they try to find solutions. But in some cases, uh, the museum brought some of the solutions because we're talking about the, or we, we let the freedom of the artwork to tell us something that is quite different. And it's not only in concept, it's more physical and more emotional. So uh, that's, that's very interesting also to see it in the different texts that uh, sometimes some of them were looking for solutions for a long time. And they say, well, maybe there is something new here, some doors opened. So it's like just the beginning. This book is to, to make like a, a condensé, like a synthesis. Yeah, it's just the beginning. And uh, yes. And you see, we, 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 we opened a discussion with major art historian, major philosopher around the world. It's a very world from China to America, very world book and uh, you have uh, you know author like John Onions, like Bredekamp here, Boucheron, Apadurai. We have here and they were quite excited by the project. Um, we can say also that nobody knew uh, really at that time that first we would have succeeded in opening the museum because they were contacted before the opening. It was so an adventure this Louvre would have been. The concept was so uh, 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 exciting, but uh, uh, promising, but also uh, unexpected that they, they write their text in dialogue with us without knowing that if they would have been published because they didn't knew that the museum would have opened really and this book would have been done. So they were quite, you know, something like an an in a real intellectual adventure to try to, uh, and after that, when we received all the, book, the, the article, the idea was also uh, to, uh, I would say, adjust that means that we resend some of the paper to some of the authors saying, you know, this has write that, this other writer, writer has that, that. So there is an editorial work, very important with one this author to connect, uh, to let know the article by the other, to also acclimate, acclim acclimate their, their work, to, uh, to sometimes to adjust uh, their thinking to other, and to also to uh, evoke the work of the other uh, authors in their own article. So yes, it's like a weaving. It's also a curatorial work, thinking. in fact. Um, the same work that you've done to select artworks in the galleries that will create a dialogue and, and be meaningful. The same way you select how you will put together some uh, of the text uh, in order to create a new kind of dialogue. And, and this works very, very well because they're really challenging each other. And uh, you know, there, as I said, there is many different movements right now to think about how to rewrite art history and world history. And uh, well, most of them never really discuss in, di in direct ways. And here through the text, they're exchanging. Absolutely, you have the article of a few of them from the team. Uh, there is an article of uh, Suraya, 
uh, Nujaim, that is uh, the Louvre Abu Dhabi now, uh, Olivia, myself, and uh, some of the national uh, French uh, curator uh, from the director of museums, uh, and uh, the rest is very uh, open to uh, philosophers and art historians. Yeah, you can see. And uh, there is, uh, yes, quite around 60, uh, you know, uh, scholar text. Uh, so it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big work. And it's not just an intellectual work. Uh, this, this reflection about the structure of the book, uh, this uh, aesthetics of the work on the, the editing of the text of the book itself, has created certainly also a beautiful book, an aesthetic book. And uh, we already told about that. Uh, we believe that it's certainly a reference book in the same times of a profitable book that something it does something aesthetical. It's a beautiful book, but it's an important intellectual book that will be on the, on, on the libraries uh, uh, and uh, uh, of, uh, of everybody and also on the, on the table of the scholars. And I think it's going to be uh, uh, an, an important book also because uh, some of the uh, articles criticize also what uh, we've been doing and what, uh, what was the result of the museum also. So it's open. It's really at one moment, we really wanted to step back and, and, and think about what does it mean to create a universal story today? Is it possible or not? The answer is not closed. And uh, so everyone yes. is free to really discuss. The major academics are discussing it. And you have all the, all the sounds, all the different uh, perceptions, uh, whether it's... The discussion is open and has to stay open and to continue. So you have uh, interviews at the beginning, have the chance to discuss with uh, Jean-Luc Martinez about uh, the meaning of this uh, museography at the opening. There was an, also an interview with Jean Nouvel giving some, uh, I think, a clue, some... Uh, uh, some secrets of his uh, way to work and think and how he thought about the, the museum and the structure. Uh, a main important article also uh, linking the narrative to times or to space from the other side with David Summers. This is on the great uh, contemporary uh, art historian. And this work on connecting the, 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 the text and the object. Uh, we, we love to do that, you know, this idea that uh, there is an incrustation, an embedding of the object in the text and the text in the object. And all the, the you know, the complexity of a catalog is to connect uh, world, narrative and, and collection. And here we have found uh, from this uh, uh, geometrical structure uh, reaching towards the circle, this idea that uh, the geometrical shape could be also structuring the text uh, and giving this uh, specific poetry of the book itself inside with the colors, with the shapes. And uh, there is a quality of the text, quality of the picture, quality of the maquette uh, of the structure of this editor. And you can follow up where we are in this geometrical structure. We are at the beginning, you know, the ellipse getting progressively on the square, the losange and the circle. So you see that it's not an art history book, but also very philosophical and sometimes uh, much more curatorial, etc. So that, that is the interesting thing because each one can really find uh, things that it feels to him. And uh, I would say we put inside a lot of cross reference, level of lecture, connection between text and other text, between image and image. There are some uh, clin d'oeil inside that I, I, I would hope and I'm sure that people can find and, uh, and uh, be inspired. You see this uh, square structure of this uh, coin, Chinese coin with the text, uh, world on human scale, Salvatore Cities, on uh, demarcation of the territory, the square with the square. Maurice Godelier, that is one of the great French anthropologists that was very exciting to her work because he made 50 years of career and uh, what is interesting that at the end, because it's quite at the end of his career, is now think about the, the meaning of art creation, uh, is symbol, symbolism. He have made one or two books about that, linking to other, um, uh, with a register of anthropology, reconnecting uh, the possibility of uh, an anthropology of art, you know, uh, the shape, the structure, the social input on art creation. We need also the anthropologist's point of view uh, thinking not about just art history, about style of or attribution, but also the meaning of the artwork, the social and cultural meaning of the artwork.
Jean-François, I, I have to apologize. We are very close to reaching the end of our time, at least. Okay. Um, so maybe we try to wrap up. Uh, yeah, no, it's uh, showing the, 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 the evolution of, look at the, yes, the text of Olivia, Olivia. Read the text of Olivia on the contact, uh, object of contact that was a symbol of this globalization that she made a very nice book article. Uh, John Onyans and um, the rounds. And I tried to make from one side the text about the genealogy on, to, to continue this narrative on history of the universalism as a genealogy, how we can say that our universalism comes from history uh, and uh, uh, from the other side, from the, the space, to explain how universality comes also from a geographical, geographical analysis, uh, this relation between exchange between culture. And at the end, yes, we finish here as a, as a great symbol. The musée is an element that helps people uh, to locate on Earth. Mm -hmm. I was saying a very personal and emotional journey. That's what we offer, not just an art history uh, teaching in the gallery. And in the book, it's quite the same. It's more a philosophical journey. I think that uh, Jean-François made it very clear also, not only to think about the typologies of our artworks, but also about why we need art, why we make art, and, uh, and why, why it's so important to have museums still today. What's I fascinating- to answer to some of the questions. Yeah, what's fascinating about what we heard today is I started by introducing yourself, saying that you are the behind the scene uh, personalities, but, in reality, we realized tonight, I think, um, you know, we had about 60 viewers today. And I think all of one, all of everybody probably realized that you are actually in the very forefront of the storytelling. Um, I think obviously there is clearly an effect of what you have achieved um, uh, in, in the recent years with, with the museum, but, but also with the book. Most of our viewers tonight are art enthusiasts. They are most of them also collectors. Um, and, and, and I think that perhaps, and this is a question to you, uh, yes, there is a, a lad effect, uh, I would say, uh, on the curatorial way of presenting uh, art. Uh, do you believe like there was a time where we were hanging paintings on the wall like crazy, the, 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 the accrochage salon as we call it in French, or even when Piggy Guggenheim invented a new way of presenting artwork or the, the white cube in the, in, the, in the 60s and 70s. Do you believe that the way you presented work, this blend of, let's say, ancient work with contemporary work, um, which you have defined through the Le Louvre Abu Dhabi, do you believe that in a way, ourselves, the collectors, we will start rethinking the way we are presenting our collections in our homes, very simply and very trivially, do you believe that, let's say, the museum effect will go down to the collectors? So, Jose, can I? Uh, do you yes. want to go? Please, please, Olivia. No, yes, I, no, I was thinking, I don't know if it is the lad effect of, or if it is a way that we all evolve, but I've noticed that also in galleries. I was talking with a, a friend who's a gallerist and uh, also mixing more and more ancient and contemporary and uh, mixing typologies also, not only painting and sculpture, but also uh, more uh, arts and crafts and, uh, and, and other types. And uh, so, uh, I don't know, but we see that it's so more richer that maybe we can allow ourselves, even as collectors or art enthusiasts, to love things that are completely different and not just uh, one kind of collections, but uh, we are free as a curator to pick and choose because... Uh, yeah. uh, this also tells a lot about ourselves. Yes, I, 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 yes. I, I, your question is very interesting because um, I think that um, there is certainly a, a nice dialogue between collector and curators. But uh, you know that uh, we were more inspired by uh, collector than sometimes curators because the co collector gather what he likes and he can connect. And we have visited several collections where everything was, you know, associated in a particular own way. And at the end, I think that curators should try to, to fight against sometimes the academic institutional mission they have and try to introduce little glimpses of the, uh, uh, the, their, 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 their poetry and their love for art like, like collectors. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, and you have, the, yes, you, you have many, many collections where when you enter, it's like a community of curiosity, so a wonder camera. 
that is like uh, the, the contemporary modern museum as it should be. The idea is that is the curator should do that not just for him, he have to do that for the collectivity. So we have to find the order that will be this, this poetry for everybody. This is another challenge. We have, a, we have a very interesting question, completely different to the one that I just raised, uh, is that you introduce something which in fact is very interesting, whether it's in the museum or of course in the book, is uh, we have situations where obviously pretty long time ago, and we're talking about the hand on the wall, obviously in the caves, where you, you find a sort of universal approach to very, very different uh, regions of obviously had never met before, uh, we, have, we had never even come across because it was so ancient and still we find similarities. Now how, and, and, the, and it's rather a, a, a practical question is, can you comment on how Louvre tackled this particular universalism of, you know, hands on the wall pretty much everywhere in the world? How did you technically uh, tackle this universalism? Uh, what you, you mean in the display or what? Yeah. What, where, where it come from in our minds? Yes, where you come from in your mind. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would say that uh, uh, we are, uh, as Olivia was saying, quite transdisciplinary, naturally. Uh, Olivia has worked in the Musée du Cape Henri, has worked in uh, uh, historical monuments. So I, I'm, I'm between archaeology, anthropology, and art history. And so uh, the, the, the connection of things that were not, well, could be seen differently. The connection between some question we can have in anthropology with the material of art history uh, um, brings immediately some question that art historians themselves don't ask. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, we were able, because it's perhaps uh, that we had the chance uh, to approach the Universal Museum with another view, another gaze, just the classical gaze of art history. And uh, I think that I would pay also homage to uh, Henri Loiret or Jean-Luc Martinez to uh, have let us make it possible. But it's true that uh, we were nourished. That's also why this book is so interesting. We were nourished by people from other fields who had already been working on things. Uh, so uh, in particular in archaeology, there is this question that is raised to say uh, why there are similar movements uh, or, or not in some parts, whether there is contact or not. And, uh, but the thing is that maybe through objects, we can go even further in the reflection sometimes. And yeah. this is one of the words, in particular, Jean-François did uh, very well. You know, we, 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 we often said that, yes, we have selected that, uh, that showcase, that subject, but it's just perhaps 1% on what we can do. In each period, you can choose uh, many other subjects, many other possibilities of connect. So what La Louvre ou La Abu Dhabi uh, intended to yes, do is to, right. say, to say, yes, you, you make it yourself. Develop your own curiosity in this way to think that uh, if you visit a museum in, uh, in, in New Delhi, and after that you visit the Louvre, and you visit one of the museums of culture, you will see things and connect. For example, in Paris, if in the same day, you visit the, the, the Musée Guimet, Agenart, and the Louvre, and uh, for example, uh, I don't know, the Musée du Quai you will see a lot of things that could be connected. And we're not foot connected because they were just, and it's perhaps the law for this global uh, all, uh, vision of art that allows us to, uh, to, uh, to think, think that this question what could have been at the core of the institution itself. And things that uh, you say all the time, Jean-François, also is that uh, we've been trying so much in the different disciplines, and in particular in art history, to be more and more specialized. That there is a point where it's, it's not possible anymore, or we don't make the effort anymore to go look what's happening next to uh, the region we're studying at the same period. So this is also something that maybe by having a more macro vision of things through a museum, we have this uh, work, or we take this luxury to have a bigger vision, a wider vision on, on uh, art history, uh, whether in, uh, in universities, maybe you will be focusing only on your period and your region. So it's important also to be complementary, uh, as I also think it's important to have museums like this one, more universal, but also others that are more specialized. So uh, 
uh, these dialogues that need uh, diversity also in the way we present things. Olivia, yeah. uh, I have to conclude, I'm afraid, uh, Jean-Francois, unfortunately. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, we could talk about this for hours, as you can probably imagine. I think it was a, you know, one of these extremely fascinating uh, uh, webinar and, and quite frankly, um, we're very pleased, very inspirational, I think, for us, art enthusiasts and collectors, to actually learn that there is a connection between a very technical job that you are doing and us collectors. As a matter of fact, we have the same interest, is to blend art, to uh, bring things together, uh, although sometimes it may look a bit crazy, but it can actually make sense with our own identity as collectors. Uh, we might be little curators ourselves, uh, and in a way, that's kind of reassuring. So thank you very much for um, your presentation. Uh, obviously, extremely encouraging, extremely inspirational, obviously. And uh, we will surely meet again, uh, maybe for other subjects. Uh, Barbara, the floor is yours again. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, it's true, as uh, Vincent just said, we could listen to you for more hours, but uh, we have to end, unfortunately. Uh, Jean-Francois and Olivia, thank you so much for sharing your knowledge and your passion with us. Uh, last year, we all have been impacted by the COVID crisis, and we know it will have, ma it will have many long-term consequences, most negative, but also some positive. As positive impact, I was reading that the lockdown has brought back people to reading and, and enjoying it. At the Art Circle, we thought that in this context, Jean-Francois Charnier's book was a perfect match a wonderful book by an exceptional expert. Thank you again so much to both of you. I'm sure that everybody that assisted tonight to the webinar would like to buy this book now. Uh, I know that it's on sale at the museum in uh, Abu Dhabi, the Louvre. On behalf of the Art Circle Board, I would like to thank again all of you for joining us today. Do not hesitate to follow our webpage on, on Instagram, theartcircle.ae where you will find all information about the organization of the Art Circle. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Barbara, Vincent. Thank you so much for uh, your invitation for this time with you. And thank you for the opportunity to, to talk about this wonderful book. I hope yeah, everyone will want to read it. <laughs> Bye. Thank, thank, thank you, you, everyone. Thank you for joining. Goodbye. Bye.